The Honorable the Premier. Question period in the Newfoundland and Labrador legislature began as it has for the better part of the week, with the opposition PCs hammering Premier Dwight Ball over mounting allegations of bullying and harassment in his own government. How could you have watched this happen and unfold over the last two and a half years and not taken any action before now? In any case where people would have felt uh, that they felt they were intimidated or they felt bullied, my door was always open. Former Finance Minister Kathy Bennett is one of five people to come forward with complaints of a toxic work environment in the legislature. Um, I experience things like intimidation, isolation, the fear of being on the wrong side. Bennett uh, won't say of, who antagonized her, but complaints against Eddie Joyce and Dale Kirby have prompted the Premier to turf them from Cabinet and caucus while the allegations are investigated. Ball claims he didn't know about any bad behavior until last week. It's hard to accept that he was unaware, but if he was unaware, is he doing the job that he's expected to be doing? This Liberal backbencher is the only man among the complainants. I've heard people on social media say, you need to suck it up. The leader of the NDP says Ball has only one choice. I believe he needs to resign. It's clear that this, his, he and his government are no longer able to govern in this very critical time. Leaders don't resign in challenging times. The, the Premier says his government resign, needs to do better. do better. If we are going to make the changes that are required to make the workplace safer for MHAs like, like Ms. Bennett and for MHAs like the others that have come forward and all of us. For now that the long that silence in the legislature has been broken, the, the government can only wait and see if more allegations are to come. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, St. John's. Well, for the bigger picture, let's go to Anthony Germain, host of CBC's Here and Now in St. John's. And Anthony, tell us the significance of all of this. Well, Ian, uh, the phrase here is the arse is out, is out of her, and that's certainly the case with what's happening in Newfoundland politics right now. I mean, think of the optics. A female cabinet minister saying she was forced out by an old boys club that were bullying her. You've got an education minister. He's gone because he's facing bullying charges. A friend of the premier, another cabinet minister. So every day brings new surprises, right? Two ministers in a week. So there is a sort of chaotic element. Element. But there's a more serious issue going on here, Ian. People are talking about our whole system of politics. Why do we call it a whip? Why is it vote like this or else? What's with the cut and thrust of politics? So people are sort of looking at this saying, yeah, there's a lot of noise, but there's something more serious being talked about here. Now, bullying, the awareness of bullying is an issue that's being discussed right across the country. But, but to what extent is, is what we're seeing here uh, kind of specific to Newfoundland and Labrador? Well, I think there's always, you know, in confrontational politics, it sort of applies, applies right across the country. But you think of some of the politicians this place has produced. Uh, John Crosby, Brian Tobin, Danny Williams. I think those guys and their way of doing politics, they would certainly have aspects of, of being a, a bit of a bully. So you know, this is a big thing for Newfoundland politics to actually be thinking about. So it's, it's caused quite an interesting conversation about just what should politics be in 2018. Thanks, Anthony.